12. Not in any wise would that earl's defense suffer that slaughterous stranger to live, useless deemed as days and years to men on earth. Now many an earl of Beowulf brandish blade ancestral, feign the life of their lord to shield their praised prince, if power were theirs. Never they knew, as they neared the foe, hardy-hearted hero of war, aiming their swords on every side, the accursed to kill. No keenest blade, no fairest of falchions fashioned on earth, could harm or hurt that hideous fiend. He was safe by his spills from sword of battle, from edge of iron, yet his end and parting on that same day of this our life, woeful should be, and his wandering soul far off flit to the fiend's domain. Soon he found, who in former days harmful in heart and hated of God, on many a man such murder wrought, that the frame of his body failed him now. For him the keen-souled kinsman of Heolach held in hand, hateful alive was each to other. The outlaw dire took mortal hurt, a mighty wound showed on his shoulder, and sinews cracked, and the bone frame burst. To Beowulf now the glory was given, and Grendel thence, death sick his den, in the dark moor sought, noisome abode. He knew too well that here was the last of life, an end of his days on earth. To all the Danes, by that bloody battle, the boon had come. From ravage had rescued the roving stranger Hrothgar's hall. The hardy and wise one had purged it anew. His night work pleased him, his deed and its honor. To eastern Danes had the valiant Gaiat his vaunts made good. All their sorrow and ills assuaged, their bale of battle borne so long, and all the dole that erst endured, pain aplenty. T'was proof of this, when the hardy in fight, a hand laid down, arm and shoulder, all indeed of Grendel's gripe, neath the gabled roof. 13. Many at morning, as men have told me, warriors gathered the gift hall round, folk leaders faring from far and near, o'er wide-stretched ways, the wonder to view trace of the traitor. Not troublous seemed the enemy's end to any man, who saw by the gate of the gracious foe how the weary-hearted away from thence baffled and battled and banned, his steps death-marched, dragged to the devil's mere. Bloody the billows were boiling there, turbid the tide of tumbling waves, horribly seething with sword blood hot, by that doomed one died, who in den of the moor laid forlorn his life adown. His heathen soul and hell received it, Home then rode the hoary clansmen from that merry journey, and many a youth on horse white, the hardy warriors, back from the mere. Then Beowulf's glory eager and echoed, and all averred that from sea to sea, or south or north, there was no other in earth's domain under vault of heaven more valiant found of warriors, none more worthy to rule. On their lord beloved they laid no sight, Gracious Hrothgar, a good king he, from time to time, the tried in battle, their gray steeds set to gallop amain, and ran a race when the road seemed fair, from time to time, a thane of the king, who had made many vaunts, and was mindful of verses, stored with sages and songs of old, bounded word to word in well-knit rhyme, welded his lay. This warrior soon of Beowulf's quest, right cleverly sang, and artfully added an excellent tale, in well-ranged words, of warlike deeds he had heard in saga of Sigmund. Strange the story, he said it all, the Walesing's wanderings wide, his struggles, which never were told to tribes of men, the feuds and the frauds, save to Fatella only, when of these doings he deigned to speak, uncle to nephew, as ever the twain stood side by side in stress of war, and multitude of the monster kind they had felled with their swords. Of Sigmund grew, when he passed from life, no little praise. For the doughty in combat a dragon killed, that herded the horde under hoary rock, the atheling dared the deed alone. Fearful quest, nor was Fatella there. Yet so it befell his falchion pierced that wondrous worm, on the wall it struck best blade. The dragon died in its blood. Thus had the dread one by daring achieved over the ring horde to rule at will, himself to pleasure. A sea-boat he loaded and bore on its bosom the beaming gold, son of Wales. The worm was consumed. He had of all heroes the highest renown among races of men, 
this refuge of warriors for deeds of daring that decked his name, since the hand and heart of Hayamode grew slack in battle. He swiftly banished to mingle with monsters and mercy of foes, to death was betrayed, for torrents of sorrow had lamed him too long. A load of care to earls and athelings all he proved, oft indeed in earlier days, for the warrior's wayfaring wise men mourned, who had hoped of him help from harm and bale, and had thought their sovereign son would thrive, follow his father, his folk protect, the horde and the stronghold, hero's land, home of shildings. But there, Thane said, the kinsman of Heloch, Kinder, seemed to all, the other was urged to crime. Afresh to the race, the fallow roads by swift steeds measured. The morning sun was climbing higher. Clansmen hastened to the high-built hall, those hardy-minded, the wonder to witness, warden of treasure crowned with glory, the king himself with stately band from the bride-bower strode, and with him the queen and her crowd of maidens measured the path to the mead-house fair. 14. Hrothgar spake, to the hall he went, stood by steps, the steep roof saw, garnished with gold, and Grendel's hand, for the sight I see to the sovereign ruler, be speedy thanks, a throng of sorrows I have borne from Grendel, but God still works wonder on wonder, the warden of glory, it was but now that I never more, for woes that weighed on me waited help, long as I lived when laved in blood, stood sword gore stained the stateliest house, widespread woe for wise men all, who had no hope to hinder ever foes infernal and fiendish sprites from havoc and hall. This hero now, by the wielder's might, a work has done that not all of us erst could e'er do by wile and wisdom. Lo, well can she say, whoso of woman this warrior bore, among sons of men, if still she liveth, that God of the ages was good to her in the birth of her bairn. Now, Beowulf, thee, of heroes best, I shall heartily love as my own, my son. Preserveth thou ever this kinship new, thou shalt never lack wealth of the world that I wield as mine. Full off, for less have I largest showered my precious hoard on a punier man, less stout in struggle. Thyself hast now fulfilled such deeds that thy fame shall endure through all the ages, as ever did, well may the wielder reward thee still. Beowulf spake, Baron of Theo. This work of war most willingly we have fought, this fight and fearlessly dared force of the foe. Fain too were I. Hadst thou but seen himself, what time the fiend in his trappings trotted to fall? Swiftly I thought, and strongest gripe, on the bed of death to bind him down, that he in the tent of this hand of mine should breathe his last. But he broke away. Him I might not, the maker willed, hinder from flight, and firm enough hold the life-destroyer. Too sturdy was he, the ruthless and running. For rescue, however, he left behind him his hand in pledge, arm and shoulder. Nor aught of help could the cursed one thus procure at all. None the longer liveth he, loathsome fiend, sunk in his sins, but sorrows hold him tightly grasped in gripe of anguish, in baleful bonds where bide he must, evil outlaw, such awful doom as the mighty maker shall meet him out. More silent seemed the son of Ecglaf, in boastful speech of his battle deeds, since Atheling's awe, through the earl's great prowess, beheld that hand, on the high roof gazing, Foeman's finger, the forepart of each of the sturdy nails to steel was likest, heathen's hand spear, hostile warrior's claw uncanny. T'was clear, they said, that to him no blade of the brave could touch, how keen soever or cut away that battle hand bloody from